Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. I'm Youngjin Kim from the Make Interact Lab in KAIST, and I'm grateful to present to you our work, Spinocchio, Understanding Haptic Visual Congruency of Skin Slip in VR with a Dynamic Grip Controller. On behalf of my amazing co-authors, Ling Yu and Uja Zhang from KAIST, Michelle Pahut and Mike Sinclair from Microsoft Research, and my advisor, Andrea Bianchi from KAIST. Let's dive right in. Now imagine yourself inside a VR cooking game, trying out challenging recipes, mixing interesting ingredients, and preparing a nice meal. You reach out into the refrigerator and grab a bottle of soda to serve with the meal. And right as you're about to pop open the bottle cap, you look at the bottle in your hand and wonder, hmm, wait a minute, how is this supposed to feel? And what would I need to make it feel real? What would I need to be able to feel the contours of the bottle as it slips through my fingertips? Well, intuitively, you need some tactile feeling of a firm surface slipping against your fingertips in a certain direction, as shown here with red arrows, while the object that is held moves in the direction of the green arrows. Now, similarly, if the object were to spin inside of the hand, as shown here, the fingertips would be experiencing slipping in opposite directions. So how do we achieve this? Looking at prior work, haptic feedback using slipping surfaces also called skin slip haptics, was achieved using rotating cylinders, spheres, or moving belts that slip against a fingertip. As prior setups did not support multi-finger skin slip, we came up with our own approach using flat spinning discs. Additionally, three recent works have used skin slip in VR for one fingertip. Our work differs from prior work focusing on enabling multi-finger skin slip interactions in VR. With the disc, to enable fingertip skin slip in any direction tangent to the fingertip, we came up with the following approach. When you touch any point on a spinning disc away from its center, your fingertip is pulled in a direction perpendicular to its position from the center. Now, if you touch different locations around the disc, the skin of the fingertip splits in different directions accordingly. Now, instead of moving the finger, if we pivot the disc around the fingertip, the same range of skin slip directions can be achieved. With this working principle, and after a few iterations, we built the current version of Spinocchio. A pivoting disc mechanism module was built and placed back to back to allow skin slip feedback on both the thumb and index fingers. The distance between each module was also controllable to enable different grip widths to reflect virtual objects of different thickness. Here is the mechanism in action. The disc can continuously pivot around the placement of the fingertip in a range of 180 degrees while spinning in a clockwise or a counterclockwise direction. The distance between each fingertip ranges from a minimum of 26 millimeters to as much as one's fingers can spread apart. Now, as skin slip direction perception has not been investigated in prior work using this mechanism, we first conducted a haptic perception study with 12 participants and found the angle perception results to be comparable with prior work. Also, generally users perceive better the skin slip directions using only one finger than using both, as shown by the JND values. With this basic understanding, we conducted a second study with 12 participants in VR with visuals of virtual objects and tested how the haptic feedback was perceived in relation to the visuals when involving the following three variables. First, the proprioceptive cues from passive and active hand motion. Second, fingertip skin slip direction combinations that are either in the same direction or the opposite direction, as represented by the four VR objects and movements. And third, four haptic mappings that were different in 90 degree intervals with a no haptic baseline. For the passive hand movement, the virtual object translated or rotated on its own, while in the active hand movement, participants moved or rotated their hands in the specified axes. Interestingly, when the hand was moved actively to perceive the object, there appeared to be no difference in how the haptic mappings were perceived aside from the no haptic baseline. Despite that, skin slip directions far exceeded the average JND found in study one. Also, in terms of proprioception, when the haptic mapping was congruent with the visuals, participants appeared to perceive higher congruency in the passive hand movement than in the active hand movement. 
We conducted a third study to see how width change would be perceived together with skin slip, comparing dynamic width change to a static width baseline. Participant ratings on realism, immersion, and enjoyment indicated that no difference was perceived between the two conditions. In the follow-up interview, surprisingly, we found that all but one out of the 12 participants perceived a width change in both the static and the dynamic width change conditions. We interpret these findings as an indication of cross-modality sensory illusion as described in literature. If you are interested in more details on each of the three studies, please refer to our paper. We developed three demo applications demonstrating interactions enabled by Spinocchio. The potter's wheel application uses grip force sensing to allow users to manipulate the shape of the clay through squeezing, while simultaneously feeling the speed and the width grow and shrink as they feel the contours. In the weight and pulley application, the user can pull the rope on a pulley holding a weight on the other end. By squeezing the rope, participants can pull the weight off the ground. And by forming a loose grip, participants can feel the rope slide through their fingers as the weight falls back to the ground. In the material laboratory application, participants can feel an illusion of material with different elastic properties. By pulling different material samples, participants can feel rigid and stretching material slip through their fingertips at varying rates and thickness proportional to their hand movements. Now here are some of the key takeaways from our work. First, in terms of haptic perception, the sole number of sensory input channels does not guarantee better haptic discrimination. We saw from our results that generally, participants needed a larger angle change to perceive a difference when involving two fingertips over a single one. Therefore, other sensory cues should be considered when rendering a desired effect for multi-channel haptic interfaces. Second, in the presence of multiple sensory feedback modalities, a known perception may be masked or influenced by another strong feedback modality. This means that as seen in our second study, because participants could not well differentiate between different haptic mappings that are pointing in very different directions, future work on skin slip perception in multisensory environments may focus not on investigating replicating skin slip directions, but on other aspects such as skin slip texture. Finally, in a multisensory feedback environment, unexpected haptic illusion feedback may be perceived through a strong feedback modality such as visuals. This means that as shown in our third study, because participants perceived grip width change even when no width change was involved, future work on width change and skin slip haptics in VR may focus on not investigating actual width change perception, but on the haptic illusion of width change and how to maximize its effect. And with that, I hope you found some parts of our work interesting, and thank you for taking your time to listen. I'll be happy to answer your questions.